really gonna send me straight to voicemail, honey? <laughs> You're lucky I love hearing your little message. Or just your voice in general. That's half of why I called, actually. I know I've agreed not to helicopter you too hard, but sometimes I wish I had kept you all to myself. I'm practically imploding, waiting for you to come home. And can you really blame me? You only get to celebrate the 20th anniversary of a kidnapping once. <laughs> but before we started anything either of us had planned, I wanted to call and say, I love you. More than anything else. Any piece of fiction or facet of reality and everything in between. I love you more than the breath in my lungs, more than the beat of my heart, and more than the thoughts in my head. I couldn't live without you. And we both know I, I couldn't bear to see you with anyone else. <laughs> and that's why I want to ask. Darling, will you marry me? I know you've been wearing the ring for years now, and that we tell people we're partners, but I want the last step. A legally binding certificate to show the world that we'll always be together. Forever. I just know you'll say yes. That's... Most of the reason I'm willing to ask this to your voicemail. It doesn't need to happen today, specifically. After all, I'm sure we've got a full night ahead of us. I just wanted to get our proposal to land on the same date as the day I finally had you. I can't wait to hear you say yes, honey. And I know our wedding is going to be perfect. I've been planning this for years, after all. Anyway... I'm sure you'll find this voicemail soon. I love you, Starshine. Hi again, darling. It's only been... Wow, only 40 minutes? I must really be spiraling. That's not important. I have been a little bit obsessed thinking about you. Like, more than usual. I just can't get you out of my head. Not that I want to. Just the thought of those beautiful eyes, or that perfect body, or how hot your scars look. Oh, s sorry about the scars, by the way. I know it's not my fault you were stubborn, but I always feel a little bad about it. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, right, the plans. I told you, you've been distracting me. I called because I've been doing a lot of thinking about how we could spend a day. I shuffled around most of what we had, but I think I've got it. When you come home, we can still meet our reservations at the restaurant like we planned. But then, right as the sun is setting, we'll head to our lake. And then, I'm going to recreate your kidnapping. We'll go through everything that started our relationship. But this time, when I trip on the stump, instead of injecting you with the sedatives, I'll take a knee and propose right there. <sighs> but I'm still searching for the perfect engagement ring. I don't just want to use our wedding bands, but I'm sure I can figure out something on that front. Anywho, this call is just to get an early input. And hopefully so you'll remind me what I was planning, in case I get more scatterbrained thinking about you. Can't wait to hear back from you, Muffin. And I promise, I'll try not to call too many more times. At least, not while you're still at work. Love you. Hi, sweetie. I'm leaving another call on your machine because, well, because I might be a little confused. I thought that your shift ended just about nine minutes ago. And I don't mean to rush, but that seems like ample time for you to check your voicemail and call me back. Yet, uh, all I'm getting is radio silence. <laughs> I, I really thought you'd answer when I called this time, but... Uh, here I am, talking to the answering machine. Honestly, it's a little worrying. But that's probably just the paranoia talking. It's not like you always get to focus on me the second your shift ends. I'm sure your boss just has you stuck in a meeting or something. 
Anyway, I'm just leaving the voicemail to really insist you call the second you can. I don't know if I can go another minute without hearing your voice. <laughs> I hope it's I I hope it's clear that it really isn't a joke. Please call as soon as you can, darling. Honey, it's uh been it's been ten minutes since I last called. I I, I really think we're gonna have another conversation about letting your employer walk all over you. <laughs> I'm only getting more worried by the second, sweetheart. I know how generous you are, so I certainly hope you aren't letting anyone shove their extra work onto you, especially not on our special day. But, um, even if you are, then... Please just call. I won't be mad, I promise. I just... I really need to hear your voice, sweetie. I need to know you're okay. A text would be good, too. Sweetheart. As much as I love hearing it, I'm getting very tired of listening to your answering machine. This is my fifth voicemail, and you haven't gone back to me. No texts, no calls, no nothing. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but it really feels like you're avoiding me. I'm going to do my best to keep holding out, but we do have reservations tonight, so come home quickly. If not for the reservation's sake, then for mine? Oh, I love you, sweetie. Where are you, honeypot? It's been an hour since I last called. There's no way you aren't off work and you should definitely be home by now. I've tried to think about all the possible things you could be doing, but nothing checks out. The only idea I have left would be that you're picking up some sort of surprise gift, but that wouldn't explain why you aren't answering or why you'd push this so close. I really hope you aren't doing something stupid, darling. You know how important this night is to me, and I hope you understand how, how peeved I would be if you didn't respect that. I will grant you do have 26 minutes before you need to be at the steakhouse. I'm going to assume you plan to meet me there and start driving on my own. But when I show up, I expect a phenomenal explanation as to what possess you to make this series of decisions. And I would kindly demand you make some effort to contact me right now. Darling, you're scaring me. I've tried my hardest to respect your autonomy. But I can only take so much, and I know you hate it when I track you, but I need to know where you are. Everything I can see makes it look like you haven't left work yet, and I know you wouldn't take this much overtime on today of all days. I don't understand what's happening, and that's why I need you to talk to me. If you don't want me to panic, then you need to call me right now. Sweetheart, are you there? <laughs> I know you aren't, but fortunately for me, I will be very soon. At your work, that is. I'm sorry if that little bit of equivocation made it unclear. I'm just finding it so easy to fall back onto those sort of Machiavellian mannerisms, you know? Just a little stepping stone on my way toward restarting certain behaviors. Fortunately for you, I'm not there just yet. I'm not even mad. Just critically close. Sorry again. That might have come off as a threat. It certainly wasn't. Not yet, at least. I'm just... So very curious about what could be happening. You know how I get. So, I'm coming to your office. I'm actually at your exit, right this very second. So that leaves, what, two minutes before I'm at the door? Maybe three? I don't know exactly what I plan to do, or even exactly why I felt the need to emphasize my impending presence. But I'm sure you do. I'm sure you're quite well acquainted with this sort of behavior from me. I really sincerely hope 
that I'm going to arrive to see you comically pinned under a particularly heavy shelf, phone just a hair out of reach, and with your fellow co-workers slightly too far away to hear you calling out. Because I don't know what I might be capable of if I find anything else. See you soon, darling. Love bun? My fuzzy little peach? Love of my life? I talked to the lady at the front desk and she had some disturbing news for me. She said you left early today and that you had asked her to give me a rather odd laundry list of items. For the life of her, she couldn't decide what the common thread must have been between them, but I think we both know, don't we? Your right shoe? Your lucky pen, your earbuds, your fuzzy dice, and the top half of your car key, and a baggie with a little bloody chip in it. Big props getting that thing out of your arm without passing out. I know how you get around blood. Looking at these items, if I don't know any better, I'd say you had strategically removed every method I had of digitally tracking you. But that would be crazy, right? After all, you know how obsessive I can get when I don't know where you are. So it must be something else. Under that line of thought, I lifted what I could off your work computer. And do you know what I found? Nothing. Not a single thing out of place to point to your disappearance. No debt to the mob, no plans to escape, not even some long-winded memoir about how you're secretly a werewolf and needed to flee to the woods. Nothing. It looks as though you decided to just leave on a whim. While I was pondering all of that, something clicked in my head. I realized there was one rather odd choice that you made. Specifically, an item you chose not to leave behind. Your phone. Now, don't get me wrong. You clearly took some precautions with it. By the looks of it, you disabled every sort of find my phone feature. If you're half as smart as I know you are, you probably installed some sort of selective jammer to ensure I couldn't trace you. And you even seem to have gotten to the bug under your SD card which means you made every effort to keep a safe, easy, convenient method of two-way communication and you're simply choosing not to use it. Presumably, even though you're getting each and every one of these voicemails. <sighs> I get it, okay? I can take that hint. You don't want to talk. That's fine. I don't want to talk anymore either. I just want to tell you one simple thing. You can't leave me, sweetheart. I cared far too much to let you go. And even without any of this high-tech garbage, I will find you. So I hope that when I find you, you have a superb reason to be missing. I love you, sweetie. And I'm not going to let you forget that. Guess where I am right now, Muffin? That's right, two blocks away from your office. And would you like to guess what I see here? Two blocks from your office? Right again, it's your car. Folding in half around a semi-truck. <laughs> Did you really think that would be enough to get away from me? A shoddy attempt at faking your own death? What? Did you think that if you did this on our anniversary, I'd be too heartbroken to see through it? Because if you did, then I promise you, darling, you've got another thing coming. <sighs> Clearly, I've gone off the deep end. If the hypothetical conversations aren't enough to prove that, then my ability to locate you certainly will be. And for that simple fact, I'm thankful. If it wasn't for you, ignoring my calls, that I wouldn't be this far regressed into my old self. And I'd probably have a much harder time remembering each and every trick there is on how to capture my one true love. So, as a sort of thank you, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. 
one last time, the final straw of my sanity, the last shred of me that is normal and well-adjusted, shooting its shot before the real me comes out to play. I'm going to the hospital on the minuscule chance that this is all a massive misunderstanding. And you really just managed to be the unluckiest sugar plum to ever grace this earth? Consider this a head start, for old time's sake, because it is the only concession you are going to get. When this doesn't work, I will be out in full force, and I promise I will have you right back beside me before this month ends, by any means necessary. The clock starts now. Honey bunny, you should run. Here we are, pumpkin. The last phone call of the night. The last chance for you to come clean. The final moment where you can call and explain that this was actually just a massive, immersive scheme you cooked up for me to flex my old kidnappy muscles. And it really wouldn't be that easy. Just a few button presses, a couple of minutes on the phone, and your exact coordinates and whatever directional system you most prefer. That is all it would take for this to become water under the bridge. I highly suggest you take me up on that, darling. Because once I enter this hospital, the offer ends. If I don't find you in here, I will find you out there. Literally, wherever you could be hiding, anywhere in the world, it won't matter. And when I find you somewhere out there with whatever or whoever convinced you this was remotely a good idea, I promise, I promise, I won't be sending you back to the hospital. No, my darling. You would be lucky if I so much let you think of a hospital, of any outside building or person or metaphysical concept. You have one minute before I step out of this car and those sliding doors seal your doom. Call me now. 305, 304, 302. You'd better be in here, darling, or I swear to you I'll... Oh my god. Wait, darling, you... Sweetheart, are you okay? No, don't shrug it off. You look, you look awful. What happened? Hit by a truck? But that means you... I, I don't understand. This doesn't make any sense. Why, why would you... And the trackers, and, and the phone calls. Why would you answer the phone calls? I, I, why, I, okay, I, take a deep breath. Yes, I would love an explanation, darling. That's it? You're getting me a gift? Honey, but what, what gift could have been worth all of this? This level of secrecy. Oh my, is, is that an engagement ring? Your grandmother's? Oh my god, this is all my fault. You heard my plans for marriage and went to get it at lunch, didn't you? And, and then the, tr the truck and you... I'm so sorry, darling. If I had been pestering you with all my plans, you wouldn't be here. We'd be having a normal anniversary. I... I ruined our anniversary. You don't have to say that, sweetie. If if I had been more stable, if I had even if I hadn't even implied that I need a ring, then you wouldn't be in the hospital bed. We'd be having our perfect night. Don't say sappy stuff like that. This this isn't perfect. I'm I'm a mess. You're hurt. We're. Do you really mean that? I don't deserve you, darling. You're... You're too pure. Can I kiss you? 
I love you, darling, more than I'll ever be able to say. No, this is, this is good. As long as I have you here, alive, I don't need anything else. But, um, I do have a question, sweetie. Why didn't you answer your phone once you were in the hospital? Right. Broke in the crash. So you, uh, haven't heard any voicemails since the second one. What? No. There were, uh, there were definitely only two voicemails, no others. No, I... Yes, I did go a little... Yandere. Well, it just sounds so silly when you put it like that. You know I don't like using that word. Yeah, yeah. The shoe fits, I guess I can wear it. Only because I love you. Stop being so smiley about it. You got hit by a truck. This is no time for levity. <sighs> well, then, your yendere is demanding another kiss as tribute for leaving me to worry. Oh, just shut up and kiss me, you... Oh, your ribs. I'm so sorry. I'll kiss softer next time. Actually, speaking of next time, I need to get supplies if I'm staying overnight. Oh, I am staying overnight. That, if, was a formality. Even if my plans are in shambles, there's no way we're not spending our anniversary together. Well, think of it this way. I'm such a compulsive, near-neurotic, paranoid lover that after what I've been through today, I'm not willing to leave you alone all night. What if you fell in love with the doctor as they nursed you back to health? Or maybe bonded with a very charismatic janitor? I need to be here to make sure this situation doesn't get any more out of hand. Be my guest. Laugh all you want. But you know I'm not joking. I'll maul an ambulance driver if I so much as think they're making passes at you. You're lucky I can't be in two places at once, or I wouldn't even leave to get the supplies. <sighs> no, it's nothing. I just love seeing you smile. Even if it's from a joke at my expense. Yeah, you're not the only one who can be heartfelt and sappy. Now, sit tight, heel quick. And don't you dare flatline on me. If you die, I'll have no choice but to march into heaven and drag your soul back down to me. Do you really want to test that, darling? Do you really think I wouldn't transcend this mortal coil just to spend another moment with you? That's what I thought. Now, one more kiss before I go to tide me over. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, these blankets are not nearly soft enough for us to snuggle in, and I have the sneaking suspicion this hospital has terrible snack options. I'll be right back, Sugar Plum. Oh, wait. I do need to do one last thing before I go. Do you recognize this? My phone number. Yeah, bozo. And you better have it memorized before I get back. So next time, you can just borrow someone else's phone and stop me from going crazy. Nope, no excuses. I was a few seconds from torturing your work friends for information. This is a necessary precaution. Yeah, I love you too, darling. Always. Now stop trying to smooth things over. I need to get our stuff. After everything we went through, we deserve to focus on our anniversary. <sighs> Even if it will have to be hospital-themed now. See you soon, darling. <laughs>